just put my earbuds in here and uh, test out the audio for a moment. I hope all of you are doing well on this Friday. I hope you're ready for an English lesson about math. I hope math isn't too boring for you. Um, sometimes there's certain subjects that people find a little bit boring. We'll get started in about 20 seconds once I've tested out to make sure everything is working right. Seems like everything is working well. We'll start in about 10 seconds. A good English lesson about math. So, <laughs> hold tight. I think you'll enjoy this one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about math. I'm not sure which subjects in school were your favorite. Maybe math class was an enjoyable place for you to be. Maybe math class was really, really boring. But either way, whether you like math or don't like math, I think this will be a good English lesson for you. We all use math every day somewhere. Whether it's figuring out how much money we need to pay for something and how much change we get uh, or just trying to calculate how much we have to buy if we're building something. We sometimes need to use math and so in this English lesson, I'll talk a little bit about math. Um, I have to admit some of the slides, there's uh, a lot less pictures in the slides and a lot more numbers. <laughs> in the slides. So, uh, once again, welcome to this English lesson about math. Before we get started, I do wanna say hi to Key Park Island Resort, Nancy Milan, Lolly Lolly, Paco San, Sergio, Mr. Han or Mr. Hassan, um, Bahar, Mode Eggs is here, Freddie Wolf is here, Lolly Lolly, Adi the Thai. Uh, I know Eugene is here, Tony is here as well. Good to see all of you and of course, uh, Todd and Dave are here to hang out and moderate the chat. I know Bear Vilson is here as well. Good to see you, Bear Vilson. Bear Vilson is a long time viewer of this channel. Hi to Lemon Cute as well. I think I said hi to Eugene from Etobicoke, but if I didn't, hi to Eugene as well. And I see Yaroslaw saying hi as well. Very cool. Uh, Kamukar, Amanjot, Layla. Uh, hi to everyone who's here to learn a little bit about math. So, I'm not going to teach you how to do math. I'm going to teach you the English words and phrases that we use when we talk about math during our everyday lives. Remember, if you have a question during this lesson, there is a link you could use to ask the question. And uh, once again, do enjoy having friendly, fun conversations in the chat in English so that while I'm talking away about math, you could practice your English communication skills. So, I think we're at the point where maybe we should get started. So, you'll notice I have the word math and I have the word maths here and that's because there's a difference between North American English where we use the short form math and British English where they often say maths. So, for me, I just say math. When I talk about numbers and adding and subtracting, when I talk about going to a class where I'm going to learn about mathematics, I would say math. I would just call it math class. So, uh, again, if you are on the other side of the Atlantic, if you are learning British English, uh, you would most likely say maths and both are more common than the word mathematics. We don't often say um, I'm going to take a class on mathematics. We would instead say I'm going to take a math class. So, mathematics, the study of uh, numbers and equations and all of that fun stuff which I will explain in a bit. Uh, math, the short form that I use and maths, the short form people would use if they are uh, over there in Britain across the way. We also have what's called basic arithmetic. So, mathematics is a general term for everything to do with math. But when we talk about basic arithmetic, we're talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Kids when they go to school, one of the first things they learn is basic arithmetic. They learn to read, they learn to write and they learn how to do basic arithmetic. So, that's things like this where you see two plus three which equals five by the way. So, you're hearing me already start to use some of the English language we would use when talking about math. So, let's get to the four uh, most common. So, you'll notice I've put a number of words at the top because some of these are used to describe the equation 
and some are used to refer to the equation. So, when you add two numbers, you use the plus sign and you end up with an equation like this. So, if I wanted to add three and four, I would say three plus four equals seven. So, notice I'm throwing words in there and I'm using things differently. I'm saying if I want to add two numbers, I would write an equation like this. If I wanted to add the number three and the number four, I would say three plus four equals seven. So, we would refer to all of this as addition. When you're learning about addition in school, you're learning how to add numbers together and you would do that by writing equations like this. Three plus four equals seven. Hopefully, that made some sense. It's the add and the plus are used slightly differently if you've noticed. And then when you add two numbers together, you get the sum. So, the answer when you have addition, when you add two numbers together, the answer is called the sum. And then we have uh subtraction. So, when you subtract or when you take away or when you use minus, <laughs> it's when you have one number and then you take a number away from it to get a smaller number. So, in this equation, I would say this. Nine minus three equals six. I could also say nine take away three is six or nine take away three equals six. Notice I use equals and is interchangeably when I talk about equations. Um and I would use the minus sign. We could also say nine minus three equals six. That works as well. Uh and again, we would refer to this as subtraction. When you're um getting paid at work, there's a lot of subtraction. You get a certain amount of money but then uh they take money away for certain things like benefits and taxes. They subtract a lot of money from your paycheck. And the difference or sorry and the answer to an equation where you're using subtraction, uh the answer is called the difference. So, nine minus three equals six. The answer six is called the difference. I hope you're not getting too bored with this math lesson yet. Um I by the way, I shouldn't say that, should I? I think there are a lot of people who love math. I myself do like math. So, I'm I'm assuming for most of you, you're like me and enjoying this lesson. Uh then we have uh, a another basic um function. Uh sorry, I shouldn't use the word function. That's a higher level of math. Another uh form of basic arithmetic is to multiply or to use the time sign. So, this is called multiplication. That's a hard word to say. I almost said it wrong. Multiplication is when you take numbers like two and you say two times three equals six. So, when you multiply two by three, you get six. Two times three equals six. Notice how just like add and um when I was talking about add and plus, multiply and times kind of work a little differently as well. Two times three equals six. This is a multiplication question and in this question, I will multiply two by three. I hope I'm not confusing you but do note again that multiply and times are used a little differently when you talk about this equation. Let me say it one more time. Two times three is six or two times three equals six and that is of course called a product. So, the answer when you multiply, the answer to the question is called the product. Two times three equals six. Six is the product. And then we have uh division or when you divide. So, when you have a number like 35 and you divide 35 by seven, you get the answer of five. So, I would say this. This equation is an example of division. In this question, I'm saying 35 divide seven equals five or 35 divide seven is five. So, again, we refer to it as division but when we talk about the action that's taking place, we use the verb divide. So, 35 divide seven equals five and the answer when you're doing division is called a quotient. So, 35 divide seven equals five. Five is the quotient. So, that was your basic arithmetic. Uh should I go over it real quick one more time? No, let's just move on. No, let me go back. So, you have uh addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. I'm not sure why I didn't put division in brackets. There was supposed to be like a visual reminder for you but anyways, those are the four parts of basic arithmetic. We also have long division. When you're talking about division, 
there are a couple of ways to do it. This is what we refer to as long division where we put the number in the middle, the dividend and then we put this little bracket with a line kind of and we have the divisor and then on the top you'll eventually get the answer or quotient. I'm not sure if you like doing long division. It was one of my favorite things to do when I was in elementary school. <laughs> Um and so, you've heard me use this word a few times. When you have numbers on a page with symbols like this, four times four equals sixteen. This is called an equation, okay? So, when you go to school and when you learn math, you will have a lot of equations and there will be no answer and you will in your mind need to figure out uh, what the answer is. So, luckily, I can still remember that four times four equals sixteen and that's an equation. Uh, and you'll notice that there is an equal sign or an equal sign in an equation. So, the reason I have two spellings here is because depending on where you are, you might say one or the other. I use both. So, I would call this an equal sign or an equal sign but if you're in America, you might say one and if you're in Britain, you might say the other but Canada's kind of uh, a mixture. Uh, Canadian English is kind of a mixture of the two. And so, I use both of them equally. Hey, let's do let's do a few questions. Let's do that right away. Uh, I see in the chat, I was laughing because Lolly Lolly said, numbers give me a headache. <laughs> and then Moda Egg said, sometimes a dot is used instead of a cross to represent multiplication. Yes. Uh, and sometimes an asterisk when you're doing computer programming is used as well. And then mode says, move on to functions and differential equations, Mr. Bob. This is too easy. I wanted to keep it fairly straightforward. Uh, we'll see if uh, someday we do a part two of this. From Ruslan, the first question. Hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you today, sir? What was the most difficult area of math for you in school? So, I went to university and because I did computer science, I had to take calculus one and calculus two. Calculus is a very high form of math and calculus two was very difficult for me. Uh when I was in high school, I did well in math and when I took calc one or calculus one at university, I did okay but calculus two was where that's where I hit a wall so to speak. That's where I had a lot um that's where I had a lot of problems. Uh let's see here. So, Azam from Iran. Hello, sir. How do you calculate the number of flowers on your farm with software or manually? So, we use spreadsheets and we put equations into the spreadsheets. So, we often will have a spreadsheet with uh, all of the numbers like when we are growing a certain number of flowers and how many are going in a certain spot and then we can calculate what percentage will have nice blooms and then we use a spreadsheet and we put equations into the spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are awesome by the way. Uh let's see here. Vitor, can you explain the difference between odds and probability? You have my thanks, Bob. I don't actually know the difference mathematically but I can tell you that if you bet on a sports game like the Toronto Raptors, the next game they play, it, they might say the odds are four to one that they will win. So, that means that um they have a pretty good chance of winning. I think I did that right. Remember, I'm not a math teacher. Whereas probability would be if you roll a dice, there's a certain chance it will be a two, probably a one in six, and that's probability. So odds in my mind refer to um betting and whether someone will win, and probability is referred to just statistic, statistical analysis of an outcome. Wow. I, I hope I'm not teaching something wrong or confusing anybody. Uh Sia's friend says, good morning, Bob. Were you good at math in school? I wasn't. Thank you so much for this useful lesson. Have a great day. I did really like math especially when we got to the point where we were learning algebra. I really liked algebra. So, that's where you have equations with variables and I'll talk about algebra in a little bit. So, yes, I did okay in math. Let's see. Um so, nerdy mode says, I'm glad your our paths have crossed on the YT plane. English is our intersection point but to me, you're greater than English. Oh, two greater signs. Greater than signs. 
You've been integral to my life. I wish you exponential growth. So, Mode used about four math terms in there. That's awesome, Mode. Good job. Obviously, Mode lives somewhere where he has an excellent education in mathematics. So, whatever country that is, Mode, they're doing a great job. Let's see here. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Is mental arithmetic taught for kids in Canada? Thank you. So, kids still need to learn what we would call their times table. Like two times three is six. Uh two times four is eight. They learn their two times table, their three times table, their four times table. But I will admit that a lot of kids have become addicted to using their phone or calculator to do math. But yes, it is still taught. Um kids are still taught basic arithmetic and taught to memorize things like their times table. That's their multiplication tables. Um Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Do you find math interesting and useful? Have a great weekend ahead. Yes. My favorite kind of math is the math that you would use when programming a computer when building a computer game. Especially if you have a game where you're trying to shoot something through the air and has to follow a trajectory. That's kind of a that's fun math to do. I do really enjoy uh, that type of math. Um it's a bit more of a higher level math but lots of fun. Um this is from Gotabaya. Hi, teacher Bob. I am Sri Lankan. Our country is in a severe crisis at the moment even without electricity. I watch your lesson today. You are a great teacher. Well, thank you. I hope things become better for you, Gotabaya. Um and I I just I'm admiring the fact that even without electricity, you're finding a way to learn some English with me. So, that's great but I do hope uh things get better for you. Um let's see here. Kuj Tisa, memory. Teacher Bob, I was waiting for this. I adore you. I will see you later. Excellent. Thanks for being here and watching the lesson. Uh let me see here. This is from mathematics. <laughs> Hi, Bob. All intelligent people are good at maths. What do you think about this statement? Have a good one. Well, that depends because I have a friend who's very intelligent when it comes to music but wasn't very good at math. I have another friend who he's a very smart computer programmer, very better than me and uh he's not very good at math. So, I don't I think most intelligent people are good at math but some still have some trouble with it. So, that's always tricky I think. Um this is from seven plus eight plus nine equals. Let me see. Seven and eight is fifteen and nine is twenty-four. Did I get that right? I hope I did. Let me try it again. Nine and seven is sixteen. Eight is twenty-four. Hi, Bob. Question. Did you like maths at school? I personally abhor it. I did like math. I I think for me, it was like a lot of little puzzles and I like little puzzles. It was fun to uh to solve and figure out the answers. Um from Winter Wright. Hi, teacher Bob. What is the difference between calculation and computation? Have a nice day. Well, a calculation is anything you uh do to get an answer mathematically. So, if I put an equation on the board, I can do some calculations. I can grab my calculator and do some calculations but computation usually refers to having a computer solve a problem. So, uh calculation would be related to math. Computation would be a computer. Uh, and the computer might be doing math but we would still maybe call it computation. Um this is from I love you KK. Hi, Bob. Can you pronounce maths and math? Thank you. So, maths is hard to say. I wonder if that's why we just say math in Canada. It's easier to say math because maths has the TH and then the S. It's kind of a, a little bit of a a crazy way to spell a word. Um Roman K says, hello, teacher Bob. Shouldn't an equation have an unknown variable? Four times four equals 16 is not an equation but four X equals 16 is because X equals four possibly. Remember, this is an English lesson but I would say for me as a non-math person, I would say if my daughter had four times four equals on her homework, I would say she would say to me, I'm having trouble with this equation. So, we would use the word equation to talk about that but we will talk a little bit about algebra in a bit. Four X equals 16. So, X equals 16 over four. X equals four. There. I solved it in my head. (laughs) Um 
from Victoria. Hello, Bob. Do you say six divided by three equals two or is it obsolete? We would say that. Yeah. Six divided by three equals two. Sure. Or you might say six div- six divide three is two like a quick informal way to say it but uh, definitely uh, two times three is six. Six divide three is two. Yeah, that's how it came out of my mouth. Six divide three is two. Um let me do one more question. This is from Eden Apple. Hello, Bob. Nice to see you again. My question is, are negatives part of math? Yes. Definitely. Thanks for answering my question. So, you can have like negative three x equals six and then x is gonna equal negative two. I'm doing too much math. I'm gonna get something wrong at some point. We'll see how it goes. Hey, before we get back to the lesson though, I wanna thank the 319 people watching. Remember, if you're new here, click the subscribe button and you will get notified when I do a new lesson. But um let's see here. Let's get back to the lesson. So, we have what are called fractions and a lot of times when kids learn fractions, in school, we usually show them pie graphs or we sh- we talk about pie for some reason. As you can see, this pie or pizza has eight slices and three out of the eight slices are yellow. So, we would say three eighths of the pie is yellow or three eighths of the pizza is yellow. I'm pretty sure this isn't a pizza or a pie because I'm not sure if any pizza or pie is purple with yellow pieces and white pieces. But a fraction is when you have one number on top of another number. A numerator on top of a denominator. Um fractions are still used um because we use uh we don't use metric for everything. We still use what we call the imperial system. So, we measure things in Canada in feet and inches because of our American uh neighbors. So, we still use things like you need to cut this board six foot and one quarter inches or this board needs to be 12 and an eighth. So, fractions are still used even though um we've replaced them I think with decimals in science and things like that. We also have the term percent. So, when you have anything out of a hundred um which actually if you look at percent, it has the French word cent, cent. So, one hundred in it. So, if you have a test and the test is out of a hundred and you get ninety three right. Uh, you would have 93% on that test. So, percent simply refers to a number that is out of 100. So, it's basically a fraction out of 100 but instead of writing it over 100, we just put the percent sign after it. Then we have what's called a ratio. So, uh, when I think about ratios, I think when I mix oil and gas for my smallest lawnmower, I need to mix oil and gas in a ratio of one to four. So, I put one part oil for every four parts gas and I mix that together and that's how the engine runs. So, when you have a ratio, you're talking about well, you could say things like this. How many men and women uh are at your workplace? And you could say, oh, we have uh, a ratio of one to one. For every man, there's a woman working at our workplace. Or you could say, oh, what's the ratio of students to teachers? You could say, well, it's about 30 to 1. For every 30 students, there's one teacher in the school. So, that's ratio. And then uh similar to fractions, we have decimals. So, if you have a fraction, one over two or a half, we would call it. It is the same as the decimal 0.5 or 0.5. So, notice in my part of the world, we use the dot. In some parts of the world, they use a comma as their decimal point but for me, if I am going to write a decimal, I would write it this way. Um if you want to uh think of something like pi which is 3.14159265. Can't I can't go any further. I used to be able to go further. Uh there's a decimal point in um pi. So, 3.14159265. Yeah, there's something something eight nine. Anyways, you guys can figure that out. Not gonna try and uh, figure out pi to more than five or six decimal places. Um and then we have what's called an exponent or exponents. So, if you see something like this in math, four to the power of two, the answer to this would be sixteen. It simply means that four needs to be multiplied by itself. So, four to the uh four to the power of two when you have the exponent two. It means that you need to multiply it by itself um 
two times. Well, once really, four times four. I think you know what I mean. We have something interesting in Canada where uh, we don't have pennies anymore. We don't have a one cent coin in Canada. And so, when you go to the store, when you pay, it is always, it's either, uh, they either need to round up or they need to round down to figure out what you owe. So, if I go to the store and if I buy something and the total is a dollar three, if she says that will be a dollar three, um, the machine automatically charges me a dollar five because we need to round up because there's no pennies. I can't pay three cents. I can't give her a one dollar coin and then three pennies because we don't have pennies anymore. So, we round up. Round up is when you um take a number and you bring it to the next highest number that makes the best sense for that situation. For us, it would be to the next five cent point. So, a dollar three becomes a dollar five when you go to a store here and then a dollar two, this is where I'm happy because I save a bit of money. A dollar two becomes a dollar at the store. So, if I go to the store and I buy some candy and the total is a dollar two, I will be charged a dollar because they will round down to one dollar. Then we have something like average. So, average is when you have a numbers, a few numbers in a row and you want to know what the common average is between them. So, let's say this. Let's say one day I sold three bouquets. The next day I sold four bouquets and the next day I sold two bouquets. If you wanted to know what's the average number of bouquets you sell per day, you would do this. You would add three plus four plus two and I put them in brackets so that I do the addition first and then I would divide that by the number of days. So, divide it by three. So, it equals three. So, three plus four plus two equals nine divided by three equals three. So, it means on average, I sell about three bouquets per day. Students are always interested in knowing what their average is. They get grades for all the work they do in class and then they like to add them together and then figure out the average and that's their um the grade they're getting for the whole class. So, average. Uh you'll notice I just used brackets. Brackets are these little curved things that you put in an equation in order to um tell the person what things they should do first. Now, there is a strategy. I think it's called Bedmus. Brackets, exponents, uh division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. There is an order that you're supposed to do but when you put brackets in, you can indicate what order you want the equation to be solved in because if there were no brackets in this equation, you could solve it wrong if you didn't know what order to do things in um because the average wouldn't, it wouldn't come out correctly. (laughs) I'm talking about math too much, I think. I'm getting a foggy math braid right now. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about algebra. Uh let me check where I am and then I'll pop into members only chat in a bit. Algebra. So, at a certain point in your math life, you move beyond basic arithmetic and you start to learn higher level math. In schools in Canada, students start learning algebra in about grade six or seven. They get a small introduction to it uh, and they spend quite a bit of time in grade eight, nine, and ten doing algebra and practicing algebra. So, that's when you have things like this. You're given an equation, three x plus one equals seven. And then you need to solve the equation. Now, I've left out a step here. I left out the step where I move the three to the other side and divide six by three. But you can see here, three x plus one equals seven. That means three x equals six because if I move the one across, it becomes a negative. We get three x equals six and x equals two. I might have left out two steps when I was solving this equation. But algebra is the um the study of math where you have variables like the letter x is a variable. And then you have equations where you either are solving for the variable or you're factoring or you're expanding. You're doing things with the equation in order to figure out different things. Algebra is a lot of fun. Hard word to say, maybe. Algebra, maybe not. We also have geometry. Let me make this a bit bigger. Geometry is uh, an area of mathematics where you're studying shapes. So, you're studying circles and triangles and squares. Uh, in rectangles, you're learning about perimeter and area and you're learning about 
diameter and radius and those kinds of things. So, geometry is the study of shapes. Um this was also one of my favorite uh types of math. Geometry was a lot of fun. And then I just mentioned the word variable. So, in math at a certain point when you start studying algebra, you will start to see variables. You'll see equ equations like minus seven C equals twenty one. And then you'll have to solve that minus seven C equals twenty one. That would mean C equals minus three I think. Again, don't quote me on this. I am not a math expert and I am not a math teacher but I do remember some math from my life. Hey, let's jump over and do a few members only questions. Uh let me make the switch here to members only mode. Um I'm laughing because I'm teaching an English lesson primarily and I hope I'm not um messing up some of the math, the actual math um, that I'm doing mentally in my head. Um and I was a little stumped with the uh an equation has to have a variable in it. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Maybe we use the word equation a little too freely uh in my part of the world. Um let me see here. Let me get a question on the screen and I'll I'll do questions from here and I'll do questions from the chat. Before I do, thank you so much to those of you who are members. All of the people who have green names in the chat are members. You're awesome. Thank you for supporting my channel. Kimmy and Kiwi say, good morning, Bob. How do you say fraction numbers? For example, so you can say one over three but for some like that, I would say a third, okay? So, or one third. So, I guess there's three ways to say it. One over two, you can say a half. Uh one over four, you can say a quarter. Uh, and one over eight, you can say an eighth. Um, so there are different ways to say it. When they're really big, like if it's 23 over 100 or 102, you would just say 23 over 102. But if it was like um, three over 16, we would say three sixteenths. Okay, from the chat, Mode Eggs says, Yes, you're right, white developer. Let's see. White developer says, In programming, use this system bracket, parentheses, brackets, and curly brackets. You are correct. Yes, definitely. Uh, and the asterisk is the times sign. Um Yaroslav approving. I really don't know proper word. Uh theorems was a disaster in my childhood. Was your nightmare about what was your nightmare about math teacher Bob? Uh logarithmic functions was my nightmare. Those were always tough for me. Uh quadratic equations I did okay on but logarithmic functions were those were tough. Um Let's see here. Betty Lou. Hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Long time no see. How important do you think math is? Very important. Um oh, and stay hydrated. I'll have a sip of tea. Very important. The world as we know it would not exist without math. Yeah, math is super important, I think. Uh Linda, I hate math but it's not my fault. I had a really bad kind of evil teacher at high school. Teachers can make all the difference sometimes for students. I'm sorry you had an evil uh teacher. That's not very nice, Linda. Wanda Prado. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you? Is there no penny anymore? Why do people insist to put prices with it? Because when we pay, if I pay with my bank card, you still pay the penny. So, the penny only exists digitally. I guess that's the answer. Um Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. I hope you're doing well. I don't like math but I do have to love numbers referring on my I do have to love numbers referring to my job. How do you say racine de en français? Oh, you would say the root of uh less than or equal to greater than or equal to um infinity and pi equals 3.14 Yes, I think you rounded that. I think there's a there's a nine there and I think that's actually an eight nine. Thanks for reminding me. Key Park, today's topic is unfamiliar for me. It's hard for me to keep up. Sorry, Key Park. A lot of math a lot of math talk today. Mode eggs. Hey, Mr. Bob, I can be your TA today. I know quite a bit about math. You can count on me. Thanks, Mode. Uh TA, by the way, is teacher's assistant or teaching assistant. Marcos. Math is confusing even in Portuguese. Ha ha ha. But it's always good to learn from you. Thanks. You are welcome. Adi the tie. Hi, Bob. Just want to tell something. It's funny. Two hours bef- before between Sorry, it's not your writing. I do, I don't have my reading glasses and I'm having trouble reading today. Uh between cooking, I listened to your podcast about eight mean English phrases. 
Uh, moreover, let me do it. Laughing because I cooking is my duty. Yes, I'm glad you listened to it. It's good to listen to these lessons too sometimes. Thanks from Yaroslav. Definitely extremely useful lesson. No problem. Thanks a million. Yep, no problem. Uh, Audie says, no one can't cook except me. <laughs> Mode says, a little after I had learned poisson in French, we were discussing something called poisson summation in a math class and all I could think of during the lecture was a large school of fish. Yes. I'm just curious. Would you say poisson summation or would you say poisson summation? Like pronounced poisson with a French accent and summation in English. Uh, Musa says, I love math. Very cool. And Musa says, I can cook. Double two excellent talents. Hey, thanks Edgar for becoming a member. I see Edgar Leal has become a member of the channel. You're awesome. Thank you for joining. Maria C. Hey, Bob. I don't have a specific question but I really like maths when I was in school but the last two years of high school, I didn't have this subject. Pretty weird. Have a great day. So, in Canada, students are required to take I think in four years of high school, they must take five math classes. One every year and two in their last year. I'll have to check that today. It's at least four but I think it's five. One of them is uh like a a data management type class I think. Lolly lolly. I solved this math problem and I figured out this math problem. Same meaning. Merci Bob. Informally, yes. Uh generally, I would say I use figure out a lot when talking about numbers and you can definitely use solved as well. Like Um can you solve this equation? Three times three equals or can you figure out this equation? Yes, for sure. Um Yaroslav says, I was not sure. Thank you kindly to Dave the Canadian. Thanks, Dave for helping him out. Um um Yaroslav, uh lolly lolly. Welcome, Edgar or Edgar Leal. And Musa says, why do plants hate math? Because plants because math gives them square roots. Oh, that's a good one. That is a funny joke, Musa. And R&D1, uh welcome as a member as well. Good to have you here. Um let's see here. Let me grab another question from over here but I'll keep an eye on the chat as well. Musa says, hi, dearest teacher Bob. Have you done something like coding? I have. Yes. I can code in PHP. I've done a tiny bit of Python but not enough to I I would really struggle programming in Python right now I think but definitely some of the older languages I know how to use. Uh Edgar in the chat says, you do great work, prof. You're welcome and Lolly says, merci, Bob. Pas de, pas de problem. Uh let's see here. I'm gonna skip the next one because it's not about math. So, Abdur says, Sir, how could I say one to four? Take my profound love from Bangladesh. So, I would say when you're talking about ratios, there's a ratio of one to four. Okay, if you need to mix water and oil in a recipe, it might say mix it in a ratio of one to four. One part water, four parts oil. So, one to four. Um Yaroslav says, I forgot this phrase, two and two. (laughs) Two and two equals five. No, it doesn't. It equals four. I was just kidding there. Uh Modeg says, no, you pronounce that with an English accent, Mr. Bob. And by the way, that remark about equations having to have a variable is true but I guess you can always use those terms liberally in everyday life. Yeah, I'm gonna check into that one because I think math purists like math teachers and people that really study math would probably say I did I used it wrong but I wonder if informally we've just started using the word equation like that. So, I'll ask a bit today. I'll ask the math teachers at school. Um Musa says, I'm coding with Scratch. Scratch is a cool language. You can put all the shapes together and click the little green flag and uh it will run your program. R&D1 says, hi, teacher Bob. Hello, R&D. Welcome. Uh Mohammed says, what is the difference between times table and timetable? So, a times table is a chart. So, if you look at the three times table, it's a chart that says three times one equals three. Three times two equals six. Three times three equals nine. Three times four equals twelve. So, that's a times table. A timetable would be my schedule for the day. At 12 30, I have a French class. At one o'clock, I have at 1 40, I have another French class. That's my timetable. So, one is the um mathematical grid of numbers multiplied by each other and the other is your schedule for the day. Ario says over here, hola, Mr. Bob. 
I'm late. My question is, do you like math when you, did you like math when you were in elementary school? I don't because it's a boring subject. I did. I did like math. Yep. For most of my uh, school career, it was a class I liked. Uh, Modeg says, keep grammar questions out of the equation. I hope Mr. Bob teaches this phrase. Yes. Yeah, is that part of the equation? It might not be. We'll see. And then MN says, hi, everyone. Hi, MN. Good to see you here. Um, so, Yehuda is using a percentage. Is it possible to speak English with 100% American accent with a 100% American accent that people won't be able to detect? It really depends. Some people are capable of this. I know for myself, as I continue to learn French and speak French, I think I will always have uh, a little Canadian English accent when I speak French. So, it really depends. I know there are some people in the world that can study a language and master it completely even the pronunciation but I think for someone like me and for most people, there will always be a little bit of an accent there. Uh, Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. I believe that this is a long-awaited lesson for many English learners. So, well done on covering this fascinating topic. Great work. Well, I hope Uh, people do find it fascinating. Um, It is math and as we've learned for some people, it is a bit boring. Uh, Musa says, I have never done coding with a Lego robot though. Lego robots are cool. They're a lot of fun. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, Let me see here. We are going to go back to the lesson. Let's do that. Um, and before I do, if you're one of the 293 people watching, uh, do click this subscribe button. And uh, you will get notified when I do future English lessons. Where were we at? So, we saw some of this in the chat already. We have the greater than sign. When you see something like this, you would say that this is true. Four is greater than three. The way they taught me in elementary school, the way to remember this is that if you picture the um, greater than sign as a mouth, they always said to pretend it's an alligator. The alligator always wants to eat the bigger number. That's how you know which way to put the greater than sign. And notice up here, (laughs) it's than, T-H-A-N. So, that is a greater than sign. Four is greater than three. I'm over pronouncing than right now. When we say than really quickly, it does sound like then. So, I would say four is greater than three. If I say it fast, I would say four is greater than three. And it sounds a little bit like then but it is than. And of course, we have less than. So, three is less than four. Notice the alligator is trying to eat the bigger number again. So, again, if you were to compare numbers and if you wanted to write that, you would say four is greater than three and three is less than four. So, I talked about this earlier a bit. One of the cool things about the world and one of the negative things about the world is that we have calculators. So, calculators are handy little devices that we use to solve math problems or to figure out the answer to equations. I think maybe I'm old here but I think kids use calculators way too much. I think that uh, kids should know how to do a lot of basic arithmetic in their heads if not all of it. You should know your times table up to 10 or 12. Like, you should be able to do like 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4 is 48. I gotta stop now. I think the next answer is 60 though. But anyways, uh, a calculator is a handy device that will help you do math. And you might even have a scientific calculator. I don't know all the details but we would just call this a calculator. And when it has this many buttons, when it has sine and cosine and tangent, when it lets you do exponents and square roots, we would call this a scientific calculator. And then above that, we would have what you would call a graphing calculator. Generally, students don't buy a normal calculator for school. When they get to some of the upper level math, they need a scientific calculator. And when they get into the maths where they need to do some graphing, they will most likely get a graphing calculator. So, um this is a cool calculator because not only can you do math equations, you can actually have it graph some of those equations for you. Um let's see here. 
Oh, maybe I forgot to do that. Let me check something here. Ah. Pause for station identificate. No. Um, there we go. Thank you, Mode, for recognizing that. So, on graphing calculator, I'll have to make sure. Let me just put a little marker in here for myself. And we'll go back to this. There we go. So, we're back to normal now. A long time ago, there was something called an abacus. When I was in grade one, when I was like six or seven years old, there was an abacus in my classroom that we could play with and our teacher taught us how to use it. We didn't use it in math class but we used it kind of as um something we learned in history class. An abacus is a way to do mathemat to do counting, adding and subtracting and other um calculations. A little device that was used for hundreds of years um when people needed to um I bet you they used it a lot when they were selling stuff to add um big numbers. Again, I talked about a graph. A graph has an x and y axis um and it is used in two dimensions to graph something like this. You can graph quadratic equations. You can graph um if you have a line segment, uh you can put it onto the graph and you can kind of see the math. I won't go into too many more details than that but uh a graph is something that when you get to higher level math, you will start to do very, very complex graphs. And then I mentioned this earlier as well. When you take a class, I would simply call it a math class. I wouldn't call it a mathematics class. That's that just sounds really, really formal. I would say I'm taking a math class at university or I'm taking a um math class at high school. Now, you might get specific and you might say I'm taking calculus or I'm taking trigonometry or I'm taking advanced geometry or you might uh be even more specific and say, you know, I'm taking calculus two um which is the second class. So, a math class, this would be a general term to de- describe a class where you learn about math. And then the teacher is called a math teacher. So, I will later today uh talk to a couple math teachers and I'll ask them about how you use the word equation and I will make sure I post it in the comments below, okay? So, look later today. I will find out from some of my colleagues who teach math, I'll say, hey, what's an, what's the proper definition of an equation? Hey, that is the math lesson. Let's jump back to questions and I will wrap up the questions and then this will be over. Sorry, I left members only chat on for so long. Sometimes, sometimes that happens where I forget something. Um I just have a couple questions left and then we'll be done. Um let's see here. Min from Vietnam. Hi, Bob. How are you? Is a number divided by zero equal to infinity? So, you cannot divide by zero. I guess technically the answer would be infinity. I don't know enough about math but I do know that when I was writing computer programs, if you tried to divide something by zero, the computer would give an error and it would be a divide by zero error and it would say you cannot divide by zero. That is not possible. So, Adi the Thai says, teacher Bob, the abacus, it came from China 700 years ago. I think I'm gonna research a little bit about abacuses too to see abaci, abacuses. I don't know what the plural is of abacus. I'm gonna say abacuses but there could be a different word. So, don't quote me. I don't think you're gonna use the word abacus very often when you're speaking English but um let me see here. I think we are, that is it. We are done. That is the end of this lesson. So, thank you so much for watching this lesson about math. I can see from the number of viewers, maybe not quite as popular a lesson as some other lessons but still, I think a worthwhile lesson to do for uh people learning English. Remember, my goal isn't to always do exciting lessons. My goal is to do all the lessons. I wanna, I wanna teach like every lesson I can on English. So, sometimes we do things like math, an important lesson good words to know when you're speaking English but maybe not exciting for everybody. Um anyways, Betty Lou is saying thanks again for this lesson, Bob. All the best. No problem. Uh thanks to all of you for being here. Let me say bye to a few people. Bye to Maria C and Mai's Dance and Kathy B and Lemon Cute and Mode Eggs. Um and Ario, thanks to Dave and Todd for moderating once again. Uh bye to Linda and Gaurav. Um Gaurav wants more vocabulary. I'll see what I can do. Um 
and let me scroll back a bit. Bye, bye to R and D one. Bye to all of you who have become members. Um, bye to Mode Eggs and uh, bye to Wanda. So, anyways, have a good day. I will research a couple things and put them in the comments and uh, I'll see you Tuesday with another.